Hello, everyone. Welcome to my session. Uh, my name is Vivian Hu, and I'm one of the uh, maintainer of the CNCF Was My Project. Um, hello, everyone. My name is Michael Yuan, and uh, um, I'm also uh, the maintainer of the Was My Project. Uh, so today, Mike and I will talk about uh, uh, creating cloud native LM apps. Uh, we will use uh, uh, Llama Edge. It's a uh, lightweight and portable runtime based on the What's My runtime. Uh, so let's get started. So uh, the current tech stack for LM applications is dominated by Python, apparently. Uh, we use PyTorch and uh, Python to do LM inference, and if we want to uh, Build some more LM agents. When you, we will use Launching and Python. However, Python has its problems. Uh, first, uh, it's uh, heavyweight because there are lots of uh, complex dependencies with Python. And the, the picture here is the um, official uh, PyTorch Docker image. Uh, from the uh, from this picture, we can see that um, uh, PyTorch Docker image can be four gigabytes. It's almost the same size of a light language model like Llama 27B. So it's very huge. And um, uh, one more thing is that uh, the, uh, uh, the, the Python-based uh, LM applications is not portable. Uh, uh, different uh, uh, GPU drivers uh, require different Docker images. Also, from this picture, we can see that um, uh, uh, QDA 11 and QDA 12 uh, share uh, 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 the Docker image for QDA 11 and um, you know, 12 is, uh, is, dif is different Docker images. So this is a pro uh, the problem of Python. So how about we use uh, native compiled um, applications uh, such uh, su uh, like uh, native Rust or C applications? Yes, they are much smaller than Python, but um, um, those native applications are not portable. Uh, if we want to run the same application on MacBook and, and NVIDIA GPU, then we need to uh, recompile, recompile these applications on the device. But um, um, Kubernetes can only extract uh, binary artifacts. So uh, that's the problem with Python and um, native applications. How can we achieve the, uh, how can we solve these problems? Um, all right, yeah, so um, I, I think this is uh, one of the common threads in this uh, KubeCon is that uh, how do we make Kubernetes work better with uh, machine learning and uh, large language model workloads? Um, as we have seen, there's, uh, um, you know, as we have shown, those Py, um, PyTorch images are gigabytes, so measured in gigabytes, right? You know, it's, uh, uh, it's very heavy, even in a, in a, in a cloud environment. And uh, um, the native applications, apparently, uh, they are not portable. It's not, not just the problem with Kubernetes. We are going all the way back to the problem where if I develop something on my laptop, I can never be guaranteed that this thing gonna run on the server or on, a, or on another device because they may have a different GPU, right? You know, it's not just recompiling because the, the code may be different. Um, you know, the, code, uh, you know the, the Mac Metal framework and the, the NVIDIA CUDA framework are very, you know, require different code, the source code to begin with, so you have to recompile. So we thought about um, how this problem can be solved. You know, that's, uh, um, it, um, it occurs to us about, I think, uh, a year ago, is that we can use the same approach that Java has solved um, right once run anywhere problem, but expand that to the GPU setting using a lightweight virtual machine, in our case, using the, the uh, using WebAssembly, right? So the idea really is that to provide abstraction layer between the application and the underlying driver and the hardware, right? Using the virtual machine to provide that abstraction so that application developers only need to write towards a single unified API and then compile the application to Wasm and then distribute the Wasm bytecode to anywhere the application might run. And then the Wasm runtime takes over at runtime to figure out how to dispatch, how to translate, and how to route those um, Wasm, high level Wasm function calls into low level, say, CUDA function calls or metal function calls. You know, so essentially it's, uh, um, it's to provide um, a virtual instruction set that is uh, um, 
that is abstract for developers so that we can, um, you know, uh, so that we can provide the, 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 the compatibility. So the, the, the key specification that's, that we use here is something called the WASI NN. It's, uh, uh, if you are familiar with WebAssembly, it's that, you know, WebAssembly uh, started in the browser, but uh, WASI means WebAssembly System Interface, meaning if it runs outside of the browser, you need to have, um, you know, system functions available to it, you know, things like the socket, networking socket, or, you know, file system and all that stuff. So GPU access can be abstracted the same way, right? So the WASI NN is, uh, is a WC, uh, WCUC standard that's, uh, uh, that abstracts uh, a set of neural network or inference um, a function calls um, to, uh, through, the, uh, through the WebAssembly bytecode specification, right? So that allows us to build different language SDKs. For instance, we have a uh, WASI NN SDK for Rust. Wasi SDK for JavaScript, Wasi uh, um, um, uh, SDK for C, C++. You know all those WebAssembly languages. You write towards Wasi NN specification, make their function calls, and then compile that to the um, uh, Wasm bytecode. Then uh, a Wasm runtime like like Wasm Edge, um, like I said, translate and routes those those Wasm API calls to the to the native uh, to the underlying AI libraries and the drivers and and hardware and all that. So Many GPUs, drivers, and inference frameworks are already supported. You know, so we have a, um, you know, so in the Wasm Edge community, we have over a hundred, uh, over a hundred contributors. At any given time, we have four or five graduate students working through the uh, L L uh, Linux Foundation mentorship program to uh, to help build those plumbing and connections between uh, between the, the the Wasm runtime and the underlying framework. So today, we already support calling. Say PyTorch functions. So it's not the Python PyTorch, but the C-based PyTorch, right? PyTorch functions from Wasm, TensorFlow functions from Wasm, OpenWinder functions from Wasm. The GGML is what uh, is something uh, you know may, maybe more commonly known as Llama.cpp is one of the most popular ways to run the large language model, right? And on top of that, we have um, a, um, a, a GPU accelerated connections to um, you know uh, to to C-based functions like OpenCV, FFmpeg. And the result is that we can run the whole suite of uh, Lama 2 models, large language models. We can run things like the YOLO 5 for object detection on the edge. We can run the Google Media Pipe, which is a series of TensorFlow models which that does object detection and you know things like that. So, so what do we get? We get uh, very lightweight inference applications. You know that's the application plus runtime in a in a in a complete image. It would be only measured in megabytes, in 20 megabytes, 30 megabytes. Although, you know, one thing I would like to say is that, you know, although the PyTorch Docker image is four gigabytes, the PyTorch C library that performs the task is only two megabytes, you know, so it's only, um, you know, less than one thousandth of that Docker image. The rest of this stuff is complex Python dependency that, or the, the, the native dependency that they have to add to it, right? By uh, um, by extracting the the C library out of the uh, the PyTorch environment and uh, hook it up with the Wasm environment, we produce significant cost savings. So we are talking again. We are talking about application measured in megabytes and uh, not in gigabytes. And uh, um, when the application runs on the devices, you know that's on the Mac or on an NVIDIA Jetson device or on server, you know that's uh, we can have native and GPU accelerated performance. We support many GPU and hardware accelerators. You know, uh, again, this is through our, our mentorship program. We have a lot. Uh, we have, uh, you know, a lot of graduate students working on those those things. And you can see from that that diagram, you know, so um, even within the NVIDIA ecosystem, we support Q.11, Q.12, Tensor RT, Tensor RT LIM. You know, different ways to accelerate the hardware, right? On the um, uh, on the Intel side, we are we are working on to support the Intel CPUs to do inference with uh, with a special library that come from Intel, right? And uh, on, on the Mac, you know, there's the traditional Metal framework, and also there's the newer MLX framework, right? You know, so there's um, you know just a large number of devices and larger number of li inference libraries that uh, that we can um, that we can um, uh, hook up with the Wasm Edge uh, uh, Wasm NN. API. So developers only need to know what's in an API. They don't need to worry about Metal. They don't need to worry about CUDA, much less CUDA 11 versus CUDA 12. You know, so in, they just write their application compiled and then let us figure out how to run it on those devices, right? So, and we also have, because we support 
those um, those hardwares and those uh, those runtimes. We support a wide selection of AI and AI models that I've just shown. You know, from vision to audio to uh, to large language models. Uh, so uh, we have learned uh, uh, what can uh, can run LM apps uh, better. So I will do the uh, first demo. Uh, I will uh, build and run an OpenAI compatible API server using the uh, Llama Edge SDK. So um, I provided the the voice, the the narration while Vivian is doing the demo. Yeah, uh, if you have a computer on your hand, you can follow us. Uh, this, uh, you can visit llamaid.com and then we will copy and paste uh, uh, this one command line to our terminal. So this command two will uh, download and install uh, all the necessary software we need to run an, run an OpenAI uh, API uh, server. Yeah, so what we are showing here, so um, what is Wasm Edge, what is Llama Edge? So Wasm Edge is Wasm runtime. So Llama Edge is uh, a large language model, is uh, inference application we build on top of Wasm Edge, right? You know, so, you know, because Wasm Edge, you can do a lot of things with WebAssembly, including microservices, serverless functions, and all that stuff. But uh, very specifically, if you want to do, um, you know, an open source large language model, this is one of um, this is a way to do it. You know that's uh, um, because it provides a very compact environment and it's uh, it's a fully programmable environment. You can you can um, you can write applications on top of it. And this first application, just one of the applications that we wrote, the source code is completely available. It's under um, the GitHub Llama Edge um, um, you know repo uh, repository. And uh, what it implements is an API server. Now it has started. So, um, Vivian, do you want to? Go back and see. Yeah, yeah please. Yeah. So uh, this command tool will uh, download the uh, WasmAgi runtime with the uh, WasmN GM plugins, uh, like uh, Michael just mentioned. And uh, they will also uh, download the uh, Gamma 2B uh, model uh, by default. So, uh, Gamma 2B is uh, recently released by Google. And uh, then it will download the uh, portable uh, Wasm app. It's called Llama API Server.Wasm. This uh, this app will create an uh, open an API server for the uh, Gamma 2B model, and then it will download the in, uh, the user interface, the so, uh, chatbot web UI, and then it will uh, finally it will run the uh, this command line to uh, to run the uh, API server. So the uh, the server is started. Let's go. Uh, let's go to the localhost 8080 port to chat with the Gamma 2B model. Let's create a new chat. So let's ask a simple question. What is the capital of rats? So this is completely working on her laptop. So she has a fairly low end Mac laptop and uh, it's already running a large language model, right? You know, so it's uh, the, the Gamma 2B model released by Google, right? Yeah. So I can uh, ask a follow-up question. Plan me a, a one-day trip. So yeah, you see it follows the conversation, right? You know, if you just tell it, plan me a one-day trip there, you know, it would not know what you are talking about, you know, to where, right? But in the previous, the, the previous question asked about Paris, so it knows it needs to plan a, a one-day trip to Paris, right? So this is one of the, um, a, a very small large language model, and you can see it runs um, really fast on her laptop because it uses the GPU, you know, it's used the, um, um, uh, the Apple's, uh, I think it's an M2 device, right? You know, that's yeah, uh, M2. The, yeah, so it's a M2 MacBook. So, you know, it's a, it certainly speaks faster than a human can speak. I think you know that's uh, so. Um, it's complete local, right? You know, and the the web server and the large language model are both running inside Wasm. So we compiled uh, application that's a stand up web server, serve this HTML web page, and then serve API endpoints that that points to the to the um, 
to the uh, large language model so that you can chat with it here, right? So this entire application, so that's uh, Llama API server dot wasm is, uh, is the application that is compiled from Rust and then, you know, um, and then we demonstrate here. Yeah, so let's go back. Uh, so this is the first demo. We just create an um, OpenAI compatible API server for the uh, Gamma 2B model. And um, as Michael mentioned before, uh, with Wasmage, with Lamage, we can write it once and run it anywhere. So uh, the next demo, I will copy and deploy the uh, Lama API server that was app to uh, to a uh, NVIDIA uh, GPU device. So let's go back to my terminal. Uh, I will stop the current process. And then I will use SCP uh, command to transfer the uh, LAM API server that wasn't to the media device. So you can see we are copying that wasm file, right? You know, just a single wasm file. There's no Docker image. There's no recompiling anything. So it's just a binary file. It's very much like a Java bytecode application, right? To a server that is uh, located halfway across the world in our off in our engineering office in Taipei, and uh, there we have uh, a NVIDIA Jetson device. It's about this big. It has a, a fairly large CPU and GPU in it. It's about it costs about two thousand dollars. We use it in our office as a coding assistant. So we run the uh, uh, Code Llama uh, model on that on that device to hook up with all the Visual Studio IDEs that we have in that office so that our developers can ask questions about it, uh, about their daily work. You know, one of the most interesting questions that we ask is uh, because we build a lot of the uh, Python stuff into WebAssembly, so oftentimes we need to translate the Python program to Rust. In the past, you, you need someone who understands both Python and Rust, but today we just uh, send the Python program to the uh, Code Llama chat uh, you know, interface and say, translate to Rust, and it can, um, you know, Six out of ten times, it's gonna do it very well, you know. So that's uh, so that's how we use it. But um, like we wouldn't have just shown, we copied this file to the um, to the Jetson Orient device, right? So now you can see the file on the Jetson Orient device, and the timestamp is today. So it's a five megabytes program. It's not a five gigabytes program like PyTorch would have you. So it's a five megabytes program that's being copied to that device. Now, please. So I will uh, move the wasm file to uh, the model uh, directory because I have lots of uh, models here. So in the uh, in the model folder, I have lots of uh, uh, light language models. I already have the I already have the gamma two B model and. Uh, this is a uh, uh, Llama, uh, Llama API server was filed we just uh, moved. So I can use the same command line to, um, to run the uh, gamma to be model. Let's go back to find the command line. So the interesting thing is that all the models she has downloaded on that machine can works with this single WASM file. So that's what we call was, it's, it's, a, it's a portable WASM file. Not only it runs across different GPU architectures, but it runs across different models. If you go to Hugging Face and search for Llama 2 model, fine-tuned Llama 2 models, there were literally thousands of them. You know, people are fine-tuned thousands of uh, you know ver different versions of with different expertise, different styles of, of WASM models, right? So, yeah, that's um. Uh, so oh, okay, so she started the application server now, and uh, because this is behind the firewall, so she's gonna do the SSH, SSH tunneling to this local device, right? No, I will log into the, oh, I will log into the device okay. in another. Okay, okay, so I'll log into the, the device in another, another terminal, yeah. So um, next, I will use a call to uh, send an re API request to the uh, server. So we, demonstrate another way of using that API server. It's called API server, but we showed a, uh, a chat interface before, right? So, but it's, uh, it also responds to OpenAI style um, uh, uh, REST queries, right? So this, uh, if you are familiar with the OpenAI stuff, it's, uh, it looks fair, fairly familiar. It's just a local host, replace local host with api.openai.com, right? You know, and uh, you, know, you, you send it in a, um, in a JSON message about, you know, what's the, the question you want to ask, yeah. Yeah, the question is, uh, uh, the same question, what is the capital of France?
I think there's something you are type something wrong because you shouldn't have that. Control C out of it. I think. What's beyond the computer? Get what key? Yeah, you know that's uh. Um, it's not properly escaped the, the, the previous time, but now you can see it's uh, capital France is Paris. It's come up with a slightly different answer every time because you know it has a, it has a, what they call the temperature setting, right? You know, so the, the model um, you know doesn't come up with the same question every single time. So, but it's both correct, right? So, do you want to ask another question? Yeah, before we ask another question, we can um, conclude that uh, with uh, uh, LaMagic, we can create uh, uh, an open AI compatible API server for uh, any open source language models. It's portable and it's lightweight. Um, because the API server is compatible with OpenAI, it follows the OpenAI spec. So uh, we, can, we can make the API server work with any toolchain in the OpenAI system. Uh, for example, LaMagic and Lama Index. But I want to uh, recommend that you use the Flows Network because it's also a serverless platform in Rust and WebAssembly. Uh, you can use Flows Network to build up uh, LM agents and um, you know, Disco bot or Telegram bot. So uh, this is uh, an open API server, but uh, there are, uh, but uh, it's not enough. I will uh, ask the model another question. So we are asked a question that the model is likely to get wrong and then show you how to fix it. The question is uh, how to install what's magic on Mac OS? Yeah, as you can imagine, the model may not have that information because um, it's a 2B model, so it's a severely compressed um, you know, um, knowledge of the internet. It takes longer because it's not doing the streaming return, does not have you have to generate the whole answer before it comes back, which is what OpenAI does, right? You know, so it's uh, um, but it's uh, uh, it's gonna generate a menu to install what's match. And uh, because you know Truth to be told, was image is not say Linux, you know, whatever, right? You know, so it would uh, give you some very generic answers, right? You know, so it says, um, yeah, it's uh, installation steps, download the runtime, where to download the runtime, it doesn't know, and uh, uh, you know, and select the latest Mac version from runtime. You know, that's, you know, in general, those are very. Uh, you know, uh, uh, generic steps. Yes, the, uh, if we want to install an app on, on, Mac, uh, on your MacBook, uh, uh, go, to the web, uh, go to the website and uh, download the, the release assets. This is the general step. But uh, it's, uh, it's wrong. It can't work with uh, what's match. Uh, here is the right answer. Uh, we can install what's match uh, with uh, only one command line. But uh, how can we make um, uh, uh, like language model can answer such questions? So that's where um, I think the the um, the Llama Edge, the the ability to develop a, uh, applications on Llama Edge really shines because I think there's lots of choices where you give you a model and uh, stand up uh, uh, API server. We have seen this from the keynotes. We have seen this from many, many places where, you know, even llama.cpp has one. It's called llama.cpp serve, right? You know, um, but a lot of times you need to do more than that. You need to, so for instance, there's a very common technique called rag, right? You know, meaning that you vectorize an external data source and then put that into a vector database. And with each prompt, you search that vector database for relevant information uh, in, your, in your own knowledge base, and then put that into the prompt and ask the language model to reply based on that prompt, right? For things like that, if you just have an API server, you would have to set up another tool chain outside of it, typically in line chain or Llama index. And uh, because you, oftentimes you need multiple models to act together. You know, one model detects what the question is about. The other model actually answers the question. So you end up 
um, having a fairly complex multi multi container setup that's uh, that has um, you know uh, uh, you know a Python everywhere you know that's so it is uh, it is complex and it is um, uh, difficult to manage right so however with uh, with um, with a programming environment, with a with development environment like Wasm Edge and Llama Edge, you will be able to build all this logic into a single application and compile them into a single binary, and then distribute that single binary, right? You know, so there are lots of things you can do with this single binary. You can, by having all the elements of the uh, APIs and and everything being programmable, you you will be able to um, say build our Iraq functions directly into the API server. So that from the outside, the user doesn't need to know there's a Iraq function. Just ask some question, and it would magically give the correct answer. You configure the knowledge base on the back end, you know, instead of having the user have to know what's the knowledge come from, right? You can do state management in the API server. You can have it um, provide answers based on the previous history, you know. And uh, you can do integrated call function callings by in the LM structure response. That is actually a fairly um, you know, uh, a hot research area where you know you have you have prompts and you have fine tuning to make sure that the LM always reply in certain JSON formats, and uh, because it's replying in certain JSON formats, they can can be consumed by another application. We are, we are seeing a lot of those type of projects in the show floor today. Um, you know, and in this kubecon as well. So a lot of those agent applications use specially fine tuned and specially prompt LMs to come up with structured data and then use another runner to run the structured data. All those needs. A different application to work together, right? You know, and uh, you have ability to uh, call external services. For instance, if there's a the problem is say refers to some URL, you need to go out to get the URL first, get, download the content first, and then try to analyze it with large language model. You know, so you can also do multiple models in a single service. You know, so that um, you know maybe some uh, some questions are answered by model A, some questions are answered by model B, or you can have model A and model B uh, each come up questions and have model C to summarize the answer or to pick the answer. You know, this architecture is similar to MOE, right? So there are lots of things you can do, and uh, um, again today you can do that with Python, or you can do that with by having a lot of glue code to glue them together. But with uh, um, but with the Llama Edge. That you will be able to build a single application that's uh, using Rust or using JavaScript or using Go, and then compile it down to Wasm, and then just distribute that Wasm um, um, uh, um, that Wasm file into any uh, GPU device that you may have. So, in the next demo, we're going to show one of the uh, Rack application that uh, one of our, uh, our uh, end users in our community built. Right? It's uh, it's uh, it's um, William, please. Uh, yeah, in the next demo, I will uh, show you how to build a single binary rug LM app. It's from our end user. It's called uh, Gannet. So I will go back to the. Uh, this is a very draft demo because they uh, ha haven't been launched uh, successfully, so it's very, very draft. So, uh, in this config, uh, dear Jason, we need to uh, config some um, uh, some information that we needed. Um, for example, uh, uh, chat is for the uh, uh, chat here. We use the uh, Llama 27B model to chat with uh, to chat with the model, and we also will use. Um, uh, a special uh, embedding model to create embeddings, and uh, the data and the document shows data source. Uh, this is um, uh, the uh, the was magic uh, documentation for uh, installing. Uh, so this is um, uh, data source. Now install was magic on different OS. So uh, after we have set up the uh, configurations, we can go back to uh, create some embeddings for the uh, document. Uh, Gannet also provides uh, some uh, shell script to quick start, so I will just use uh, one shell script. So I will use the uh, init script to uh, create uh, embeddings. 
uh, from the uh, returning log, you can see that it will, oh, sorry. Uh, it will download the, uh, all the necessary software, uh, like uh, uh, what's my runtime, and it will uh, install the you know, QGrunt. It's a, a vector DB. It's written in Rust. And uh, it will uh, also download the chat model, Llama 27B, and it will also download the embedding model to create, uh, to compute embeddings. It's called our mini LM. And it will also download the uh, API server. It's a portable word file. And it will also download the uh, user interface. Uh, then it will create um, um, collection, a QGrunt collection to, st uh, to uh, store the data. And uh, then it will uh, start the uh, Llama API server. So the server will download the, uh, the document from the link I provide in the config.json. And then it will upload to the, uh, the document to the uh, Llama API server. And then the uh, uh, the Llama Edge API server will uh, will chunk the you know, document, so a large uh, a large articles will become uh, smaller uh, chunks, and then uh, the API server will call the embedding model to compute the embeddings based on the chunks, and uh, after the embedding is done, it will upload the embeddings to the you know, QGrunt to uh, a vector DB. And um, uh, this is a um, uh, step to create um, uh, embeddings. So we already have embeddings, so then we can uh, chat with the uh, chat with the Lama 2 uh, 7B with these embeddings. So I will use another, uh, another uh, shell script. This shell script will start the uh, QGrunt in, uh, instance and then start the uh, Lama API server again. Uh, this server is for uh, for run uh, for build an API server for the uh, Lama 2B uh, for the Lama 2B model. So we can uh, go to uh, localhost 88 to chat with the model. So uh, we will ask uh, the same question: How to install Was Magic? Because we have uh, uh, given the model uh, the Was Magic uh, doc documentation for installing. This is a 7B model, so it's run slower than the 2B model, especially at startup, because it needs to load all five gigabytes of uh, the model content into the into the memory, right? But now let's come back. Based on the provided context, you can install WasmMage runtime on Mac OS by running the following command. And that's exactly the command that appears in our documentation, right? You know, that's uh, the Llama 2 7B model doesn't have this knowledge. It's a, it's a documentation docs that we provided through the um, through the vector database, right? Yeah. So uh, th uh, this time uh, the model given the uh, the right answers. So with Llama Edge we can create um, uh, complex uh, complex uh, uh, LM applications. Uh, this uh, uh, this is all the demos today, but we still have one more thing. Yeah. So, so with all this, you know, we are at KubeCon. You know, we have demonstrated command lines. We have not have time to show you the source code. You know, all the source code are available. You know, at the end of this, uh, uh, the next slides, you know, you can see the source, the Rust source code for the API server, for the Rack API server, and you know things like that. But all this runs in Kubernetes. You know, um, we have been working with um, Kubernetes distribution in the community for the past two three years to support um, Wasm as the first class. Um, uh, 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 container 
for all artifacts in the Kubernetes cluster, right? So we can push Wasm applications to Docker Hub and uh, label it Wasm. So when CRON or Container D pulls down that image and sees it's not x86, not ARM64, but Wasm, it knows to use the Wasm runtime like Wasm Edge to start it. So with that, we would be able to run those large language model applications. We also have demos in our, our website to, um, to distribute those um, large language models in uh, a device agnostic way through our Kubernetes cluster, right? You, as you can imagine, there's lots of things that you can do now with uh, um, with devices on the edge, with devices on the server. So that's uh, so uh, I I'd really encourage you to to try it out. Although we don't have time to show a full Kubernetes demo, we we only have time to show the command line demo. Yeah. So those are the resources of the things that we talked about, you know, with including all the source code that you see that's uh, to build the regular API, plan, vanilla API server, and the Rack API server, and, uh, um, you know, and uh, uh, how, how to run those in, in, uh, with container tools. So I think. Yeah. So that's, that's it. Well. Thank um, you. Thank you. I think our time is up, but you know we can stay hang around for a couple minutes. So if you have time, if you have questions, come up, come up and ask us.